It's Grand Finals Day. Best of two, Class Champs versus Tribe Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, let's kick into this. We have player cameras today as well. Let's go ahead and put Picastro on camera because he's opening up for Tribe. No, he looks like Picastro opened up for Class Champs. A bit of lightning used in the middle base here. As I get the camera sorted here. Oh my goodness. There's so many cameras here to choose from. Um, there we go. There he is. I see him. I see him. I see him. Let's pop up that camera right there. And let's see if P. Castro can start us off right here with a zap into Kill Squad Lalo. He's got the sneaky goblin that he's getting ready to go send it towards the town hall. But he's just using the queen, as you can see, to just remove all the collectors and storages into that area of the base there. So we can have a path for the sneaky goblins to go in. We test one. We trigger the traps. He got most of the traps there triggered. We see a giant bomb and a tornado trap that went off. And now we could go for another test if he's comfortable. But he, go he does. He does. He doesn't find any additional traps right there, so we safe to send him the rest, and he can go ahead and make those invisible, and he can secure the Town Hall takedown. Up top, the King was able to push all the way over to the Scattershot compartment on the far right side of the base there, and he was assisted by the World Champion, and he got a partial CC pull there with just a couple of Super Minions popping out. On the far left side here, we got the Warden protecting the Headhunters to dive in after the Defensive Queen, able to take her down. No issues there. Into the Scattershot we go. Slammer taking the inside path there with a Dragon Rider, and it's pushing into the multi infernos but a bunch of red air bombs are going out there, but they're all going to the Dragon Rider. Another Dragon Rider pops out of the Stone Slammer, and they will work together in the core of the base. They're stopping the Eagle Artillery strikes as well with the Freeze with the multi inferno right next to it. But Tesla Farm... Seems to be completely under control here. The Dragon Riders are going to sweep out the core of the base. So this is looking really, really good. He's throwing in a couple of extra balloons to go after the sweeper to be knocking him back as he makes his way forward to it. But doesn't seem to be taking enough knockback here to be able to stop him from getting the multi. And the multi was the only thing that could have stopped this right now. So there we go. Pete Castro. It took me a second to get the cameras online there, but we got it done. And that means that we will put some pressure over to Clash Champs. I just keep on messing up the names. All right, triple on the board here for Clash Champs and Tribe Gaming will now need to respond with one of their own. So if you're unfamiliar with the best of two format that these players are going to be playing under, that means that we're going to add the score of both a first and second war together. The combined total of stars and percentage will decide who's going to end up taking this win. So let's dive into Nebrox for the opening attack of Tribe Gaming, and it looks like he's sending in his trusty Electro Dragons. Very good as a deck here. One of the best uh, Electro Dragon attackers that I've ever seen. But it looks like he just sends in a couple of Rocket Blooms to pick up the air defense opposite of the Town Hall. Maybe we'll do the same thing on the other side there, or I guess he could just put the King and the Queen over there, but looks like he's actually getting ready for a side entry here, which, I mean, that puts you at the side of the Sweepers here, which always makes me a little bit worried. If we don't get the funnel very tight here, then the sweepers could definitely knock us away and prevent us from getting into the CC of the Monoth area. We need to get that area down. Queen and the King deployed on the bottom side here. We'll go get the air defense away from the E-Drags. And notice how every single one of the Electro Dragons are covered by the ward ability. And that's why we pop it early. We go into a dense area of the base there. We pop the ward ability extremely early and protect the blimp on its way over to the Town Hall. Very, very simple approach here. But then into the core of the base here, we will get the shots and take the CC down with the CC troops still inside of it. And then chains to the back side of the base here, looking very, very good. He got the defensive hero on the back side of the base there down. And with the queen out of the way over there, his queen and Roar champion should be able to march their way through. But he's not done with the warden yet. The warden keeps on chipping away at the Inferno with the Phoenix right there. And I think he ends up getting that. So nice hit on the cake right there. Still warden just sticks it out for a little bit longer. And now what's left here for the Roar champion to fight? He's got an, he's got an extra rage. He has an extra rage. He's completely gutted out the base here, and he's just kind of being patient and waiting for the Queen to continue coasting through some of the lighter defenses here, and then he can put the Road Champion down. Here we go, put her in now. Trying to, uh, I guess, maybe let the Queen get through the trash here before we put her down or something. I don't know. I guess the Road Champion, I feel like she could finish off the rest of the base on her own. Unless there's a bunch of ground skellies. There could be a bunch of ground skellies that stop this up here. As he goes into the scatter shot and the expo, but he'll rage up in that area and that'll power him through a little bit faster. The rage is a little bit early, but pops the RC ability. Don't go to that side. Don't go to that side. There's grass skellies. Oh, so much damage for that expo. She goes down. That's what I was worried about. That's a ground expo. So we pick up another the queen here. She's got her ability. She's got 40 seconds to go. Fights the grass skellies away from the CC or away from the expo range. 
And now we'll start to take fire. All right, queen. All right, queen. This might be a bit close. He's taking fire for a long time, but he is circling in now. Go to the expo. Go to the expo. Finally, gets okay, he's got it. He's got it. The queen finally takes the turn of the expo rather than running all the way out to everything else and leave it to the end. It is a triple for Neeprox, and he will match the triple put up by Clash Champs. All right, let's switch cameras over to Padalino. As we dive in for the second attack here for Class Champs, looks like a bit of lightning to take out the Expo and the Multi Inferno. Then we'll have the Kill Squad dive into the other Multi Inferno. If he swaps out to a Log Launcher right now, he could potentially go all the way in and get two Multi Infernos, the Expo and the Eagle, and potentially even the Sweeper there. And set up a very nice Lalo in front of the side of the base there. What a big test farm. Actually going to stop him up. He has a blimp selected at the moment, and I'm not sure. Nope, he does swap it out. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I assumed that was going to happen. It happened. It's like I'm a... It's like I'm a... I can, I can read the future, you know? <laughs> what, what's the profession that can read the future? Not a tarot card reader. No, that wouldn't work. <laughs> that doesn't tell you anything. Uh, but Trembla pushing in with the... Heroes able to take out the Multi Inferno and the Expo, and the Queen ends up surviving. The Yetis are still alive. A scout. Wait, he's not done yet? He's gonna continue pushing this Queen. The Yeti not try and take the lead into the Monolith. He's got a skeleton spell right there. If this Queen ends up taking that Monolith, that'd be insane. But she's fighting the CC at least, and that means that the Road Champion is freed up a little bit. He's got the Water Ability carried through the Town Hall, but he does end up he's stuck in the Tornado Trap, pulled back in the Poison, ends up losing all of the balloons as a result. Queen goes down. More balloons. He didn't put all the balloons in the town hall. He saved a bunch of them. And he's able to just continue to drop balloons across the top of the base here. But he does need to get his world champion through the model still. And then she needs to survive there and get to the scatter shot. Getting the top compartment down. But the scatter shot's doing a lot of damage here. Or champion not able to get the model down. The queen was not able to get the model down. The ice golems completely shut down that takedown in there and they're gonna end up having this monolith hold the line it's a defense there's nothing you can do about it it's gonna end at a 92 percent and we'll pass it to tribe and we'll see if they can take advantage of it let's dive into exkosis will be the next striker for tribe gaming let's dive in he's going for the queen charge into twin hog he's got rock blues in the mix as well i assume we can use the format of funnel somewhere Maybe go after the scatter shot or something. Maybe just pick off a defense that protects a flame flinger. Guess we'll see. But the queen will just wrap around to the north side of the base there. And I assume she's going to get cut off there at the top left and get pushed into the town hall compartment. With that current path that she's taking, could imagine you do anything other than that. Catches a black air bomb with a cocoa loon. It is obviously a very common position to push into the base. So it is definitely going to be trapped up here a little bit. I'd say probably more so right over on the edge of the base there in the void space. To drop, to stop a drop of a blimp into the multi-inferno right there. The side entries could be a little bit more safe. Hard to say. Depends on what they're specifically trying to stop here. But he will... Get the CC pulled now, and he's under relatively low damage with the Expo that he got down there. So he's not going to be needing more than a rage here to get through this Lava Hound. Just to top him back off there as the Hound pops. Got under control. Poison is faded, but he has a Lava Pup there to get him back in action pretty quickly. But it does waste a lot of the time of the Queen there. A lot of those high damage shots are just being poured into Lava Pups there, which is a major slowdown, which means we're... Just barely ready to start the hogs, and we're sitting at a minute and 15 seconds left on the clock here. So here they come. Going right at the minute 14 second mark. Into the defensive CC. We got the headhunters right there. We got the the super hogs deployed down front there. The regular hogs on standby still, and whatever's inside of the flame thing will come out in a moment as well. He's using the rocket to go pick up the model on the right side of the base. 
And the queen getting cut off by the king over to the left side will potentially go to the core of the base there. She does have access to go in. And the hogs are all splitting south and going across to the eagle artillery. They're getting a nice regrouping there. And everybody's going to be alive and converging onto the final area all together. Yeah, 46 seconds. That should be enough time here with what we see, with what we see left on the base here. But multi Inferno doing a ton of damage. The Scattershot doing a ton of damage. Queen claims one of them. Our champion does go down, down south, and the board is on its own. It is that came out of his flame thinker, along with Electro Titan, continuing to work down south. He's quickly cleaning up here. He's already cheering. Exocis will get the triple, and Tribe Gaming are going to take the first lead of the war. Playing from behind now, but only by eight buildings and a star. Swing in an instant. Leo. Needs to keep war number one tight. Remember, this is a best of two, so the scores of the first war will add to the scores of the second war. And the combined total will decide the champion of the Khan Brothers Championship. Leo going to the Skelly Donut to take out the Multi-Inferno and the CC. Nice, simple star here. Well then, get ready for the heroes to dive in. Since the building that was chosen with the town hall or with the CC I mean was on the bottom side of the CC then the heroes would typically go in on that side of the base there to try to connect to the spot that the skelly donut was removing so what does he do with why did he what why did he just make that invisible was he trying to he's trying to push the king over to the right or is he trying to push the king over to, I don't know what the point of that invisibility was. I'm a little bit confused. But the king does circle out after he takes the eagle artillery down. And he's still went to that compartment even though he made it invisible for a minute. Maybe he's trying to go to the multi, but that multi seems to be going to get missed now. I'm a little bit concerned if that's going to mess up the next part of the hack here. But the phoenix keeps on working. If that phoenix takes that multi, that'd be huge because then he ends up with both of them regardless of where that king decided to go. That'd be huge. I think he's going to end up winning that fight there. It's going to knock back to the sweep. But at the same time, the blimp gets protected under the ward ability. It dives in to go secure the town hall with the Yeti bomb. And then the balloons will, under the ward ability, go after the multi inferno. They're taking a ton of damage right there, but they do end up making it through. Our champion cuts across the middle of the base there. And that multi did drop on that right side. More hounds in from the top. Get the skeleton spell to get rid of the defensive queen. Or at least anchor down here so we can slip in five headhunters to go after her. He really, really wants her to go down. And he quickly tags her out. And where are the headhunters going now? They're going to the king. Okay, they're going to cross through. That's fine. That's fine. They were tanking the expo. We keep the damage off of the world champion for a little bit. And the world champion will pop her ability to get the expo down. And Leo looks like he's got it under control. So class champs will put the pressure back over to tribe. And if they want to sustain their lead, they need to get at least a 92% to match the miss from Padalino earlier. So, nice job, Leo. That was, uh, that was pretty clean. That was pretty clean. I, don't, I still don't know what that invisibility is for. But it doesn't matter. It's a triple on the board. Looks like it's going to be Yo-Yo 23. Striking next for Tribe. Let's put him up here. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if he can maintain his team's lead with a queen charge to start us off here. And it looks like he's going to follow it up with a super bowler smash attack. And, uh, super... Okay, okay. I think there, there's only one way that you can do a smash attack through the town hall at town hall 15. And that's exactly what Yo-Yo is going to try to demonstrate here. Not an easy thing to, not an easy thing to do, but... He can pull it off. He's got the CC pull. Bunch of ground skellies. And the queen will go ahead and fight the CC in relative safety. He did get one of the expos down before he had to fight the CC. So that's looking good. And had to put in a couple of hogs there to go pull the CC ahead of where the queen was at. So that she can make sure that she can get it uh, dealt with before she locks on the town hall. Otherwise, she'd be pulling it right now as she locks the town hall down. But once that town hall goes down, since she's on the right side of that compartment... The Electro Titan and the Super Bullets are going to the left side of that compartment. And by the time they get in there, the poison should be faded. But his queen gets targeted by the Monolith. She steps forward more directly than everybody else there. But everybody else is starting to lead the charge now. And the healers stay safe. Healers stay safe. He pops the ward ability. Red air pops are going off behind the town hall. 
Come on, move fast, move fast, Valerian, the warden ability. Need to get those healers to search forward to get the rest of the red air bombs cleared before they go off. And watch red air bombs. They're on the queen. They're on the queen of the warden right now. Super Polaris keep charging forward. There's a black air bomb, but only, okay, there's more. Okay, they're, they're, they're just slowly taking damage, but not enough to drop the pack of healers. And it's keeping him alive. He's wiped out the core of the base now. And the Rochamp will start to work with the King to wrap around the outside. The King was deployed early on the attack, remember? And he's still hanging on. But there's still the massive obstacle on the backside of the base there of that defensive King. But the healers did transfer the Road Champion here. He's got a freeze. He needs to use it to protect the Road Champion through the defensive King. He's got a Headhunter down. He freezes and he does have some tanking. The head I didn't realize he even had Headhunters left there, but he does get that defensive king under control there with the headhunter and he takes him down he's got support from the cc troops up top he's still moving and he's got the defenses down he even got the tesla that popped down south and he's got it a hundred percent under control yo yo 23 will put the third trip on the board here for class champs for wait that's the that's the third time that i that i messed up names this war <laughs> but i did it in the opposite direction this time uh tribe gaming gets the triple on the board and they will sustain their lead over class champs. Oh, okay, okay. I, I thought Loop was going to be next to go, but it's actually going to be his teammate, Selenio. So let's put him on camera here. Selenio, live for class champs. Let's dive in and let's see what he's got. Usually he's the closer for the team, but diving in a bit early. Giving Loop a little bit more time to think about what he's doing there. Looks like he's going out the queen charge into twin hog attack. The hogs over the left side of the base there to go pick up the wizard tower. A balloon to go search for any black air bombs uh, as he drops in a blimp to dive in after the scatter shot. Okay, that thing keeps going. He goes all the way in. Right, does it inside of the channel? All right, Yeti can't strike anything, but he's throwing Yeti mice. He gets the multi inferno down. He's gonna get the scat. Oh my goodness, that was some high value for that for that Yeti bomb. <laughs> he landed in a empty compartment and he took out everything on both sides. Nice job, Selenio. Good spot right there. But he will go ahead and pop the Lava Hound that he was able to pull because he had the Yeti Bomb drop inside of the CC range while he formed out the funnel and took out, obviously, a lot of major. Oh, no! Not formed funnel! The Queen going the wrong way here, but he quickly wrecks, and the King ends up with that invisibility and a rage taking the Town Hall down. That was a quick split second decision that ended up working out potentially if we can now keep this queen charge moving and stay alive she's going to the top of the base here hogs are coming from the right the hogs probably were supposed to go to the eagle artillery but the queen is changing everything here he needs to get that outside of the base here in control so the queen doesn't loop out to the trash over there but the hogs are pushing in there's the ward ability does he have headhunters going after the defensive road champion i see one I only see one, but it looks like it does ride safely. He rages that headhunter up and the hogs over there as the queen obviously is not in need of the rages right now. And she still has her ability to protect herself here, but the war champion gets all the way across to the eagle artillery, able to take it down there, pops her ability, hits the multi inferno. Couple hogs on the outside of the base, they're still working, but they're all on foot. There's one, there's one hog that is stepping in there, but everybody else is on foot. He's got party wizards working with all those hogs out there, but the war champion's still moving. And what an adjustment. He's able to recover it when the queen somehow missed the funnel. That funnel was very, very well said as well, but the king just kept going for way longer than he spoke to. But it's a good thing he kept going all the way and then got the support to take the town hall down. So Lino gets it done and Clash Chance with the pressure back over to Tribe. Rakiris and Kronos are the final two attackers and it looks like it is going to be Rakiris. So let's dive in. Let's see what he's got. It is going to be a zap into Kill Squad Lalo. We already saw this attack earlier in the war. But it's not being done like we saw with the previous one with the log launcher and the typical way that people are using this attack in Legend League. Kira is well known for being one of the best of the best here when it comes to Lalo. It's his specialty. Doesn't seem to miss with it. He's diving that flame flicker in the bottom of the base there. He doesn't need to get the mortar under control, so we'll see how he handles that a little bit later on. But also notice that he has nine sneaky goblins here as well. So if you can clear the collectors and the storages, 
around the town hall area with his heroes while they dive in to get their targets, then he can get the sneaky goblins to go in and actually secure the town hall takedown with that invisibility. So the queen just go to the multi inferno. The king, with his ability intact there, approaches the defensive queen and will go after the scatter shot there as well. The ground scale is there, slot him up there, taking a lot of damage, but he does make his way forward, poisons the CC, trying to get the arc charge. The archer's off of his king while he fights the queen, and he's able to take her down. Looking at the scatter shot now. Working the scatter shot. Queen is able to get her targets up top, and the scatter shot ends up staying standing. The Phoenix is still working on it, but he gets pulled off, and he ends up leaving the scatter shot up. He puts in a haste to get the. Oh, tornado! Take the town hall! Oh, he almost missed it right there, but he's able to take the town hall down and able to now set up the Lalo to go in and pick up the extra scatter shot that was left behind. It is low HP, but the Battle Brothers is repairing everything in the area right now, and he will get a death there before it does much more. He's got rocket balloons coming out of his, his flame flinger right now, and he's got a lot of base left here. We'll be fighting a sweeper as he makes his way forward, but he's got a hound crossing through right now. Court ability goes off, protecting the Hound. The Hound will go over to the left side air defense, and then you can put in more balloons in for that quarter there. Need to pick up these outside defenses. Need to go over and get the Archer Tower and Cannon over to the left side as well. Perfect. Just claps in as he goes. He's out of spells now. He uses his last freezes to lock out the last big defenses, and he's got the World Champion on the ground there getting stuns, and he's actually pushing through quite strong right now. He's got three balloons left on standby. The Hound is crossing through. Get ready for backside balloons out of the Cannon. And as soon as the Hound arrives, Blooms come down, and the Hound pops, and he just will coast his way through the last of the defenses here. He's got 30 seconds. Make his way back over to the Expo on the far right side and get the cleanup done. I think he's good on time, right? I think he's good on time. He's going to sustain the lead here for his team. Tribe Gaming are potentially in perfect war territory, but Clash Champs are hot on their tail and not letting up. It's a triple for Rakirez. And they're going for the perfect. But Clash Champs is still only eight buildings behind. It seems like no matter what happens here, we're going into war number two with a very, very close score. So let's see what Loop Zara can do as we dive in with a Electro Titan Super Archer Smash Attack. He's got the Log Launcher selected right now. Going after the defensive row champion right at the gate here with the wall bridge go into the scatter shot. If he's going to that compartment, then he probably wants to just travel through and then go back out the other side of it down south and then join with everybody else there and then start to march across the base here. But I gotta keep a close eye on this multi inferno here. If it ends up targeting the healers, then it could be a problem. But the sweeper actually could work to his advantage here and make so that even if he rounds the multi, he would end up having the sweeper get knocked back to safety and never actually take any damage to them. Queen swinging wide. He's got the wall break on the intersection. Make sure you get the wall break before that cannon goes down. So the wall break will actually target that intersection and let the queen and the warden out of there. Lose the healer to a black air bomb. Got a couple extra coca loose down. Search in the area. Scan in the area. Playing Minesweeper. We get the expos down. And with that extra wall break that is once again place to actually target the air defense there. He's able to get the transition once again to now join with everybody and with uh, just over a minute used there he's actually set up very very nice and he's played that very time efficiently for how much of the base there he was able to take out. Wait what happened up top here? What do you clear that with? Let's see what happened up there. Um, but either way the main push here going across to the town hall with the log launcher. Open up the whole base. No jumps necessary here. Single Inferno in the Town Hall compartment. Monolith on the other side of the Town Hall. He's got a Skeleton spell that he's using to lock out the Defensive King and is holding the Monolith Fire Bay for now. Headhunter's dropping to get the Defensive King down. Town Hall drops. No issues there. We're champion. Gonna make her way across the left side of the base here and join with everybody. Staying away from the Monolith. Staying away from Defensive Heroes with her. And he seems to have the push into the Monolith now. The Super Archer's locking on. Yeti in its face and the Yeti Mites will throw and... Take it down, it's a triple! Loop gets it done, and we've got ourselves another high pressure situation for Tribe. Either they're going for a perfect war, or they're potentially giving up their lead as we go into number, war number two, and Class Gems could actually take the first war. The final attacker to decide war number one, ladies and gentlemen, it is Kronos 
as he drives for the perfect war for Tribe Gaming. It is going to be a recall Queen Charge into Electro Dragon attack. Queen starting in the air defense in the opposite side of the town hall. Gonna pick it off here, get the funnel formed. I'm looking at sweepers. Always got to pay attention to sweepers in Electro Dragon attacks here. A couple of, or at least one red air bomb in the right hand corner there, kind of randomly placed out there. Uh, sweepers are going to be behind, or no, he, he's going to end up facing one sweeper there as he enters at the base here. But the queen will march along the far left side of the base here, and the E-Drags have a funnel now. With the king and the world champion staying on standby here. But the queen moves slow, you don't want to have the queen move too quickly and end up going inside of the CC range if she gets supported by the other heroes. You just gotta coast, you gotta coast. And so we can make sure that the CC goes down before she gets close. But he's got the ward ability protecting the E-Drags. Queen taking Mono the Fire. She's under Expo Fire as well, but the Expo should go down soon. She steps into the Mono. He freezes, but the Queen hanging on, but goes to ability. Will get the Multi down. He freezes for that blimp. It's stuck in the tornado trap there. He's able to get the tile down, and no issues there. Drama free so far here, but he gets to the core of the base here. He's got a partial CC pull here. I just see the super minions. Maybe there were some headhunters in the mix as well, because I see, I do see that the warden took a lot of damage, so I think he did get a full CC pull before that, but better safe than sorry to make sure that CC goes down, and he wipes out the rest of the core along with it. Queen already used her ability, but she's got the support of the king, and he's got the support of a couple of headhunters. And the world champion can join in just a moment. The king pops his ability. He's the first to arrive in the defensive queen. And the barbarians distract and completely the negator. Comes the world champion across the middle of the base here. Got some headhunters. He's got headhunters following the world champion. You're going to go after the defensive king. He's already weakened up. The champion's taking the defenses. The world champion takes the queen's healers. That's kind of crazy here. But the headhunter dies out to the defensive grand warden. So the world champion's in danger. Champion goes down. That could potentially still stop this. Queen still has full HP. I think he's under control. I think he's looking good. He's already pumping his fist there. He's showing his screen. He knows he's got it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a perfect war in the grand finals of the Khan Brothers Championship. They're able to hold through all the way to the end. And this war has only left eight buildings and one star on the board over the course of both teams. We're going to war number two, and it's going to start with Tribe Gaming holding advantage.